Uh, thank you guys. We're going to get started. Uh, there's a chair here. There's another one. Yeah. Uh, for starters, I'm just I'm really excited. I'm really excited that we have some guests here with us who are going to help us with our language activities tonight. It always uh, makes my heart feel good when our speakers come to help us. So I just want to say good cheese to them. We also have some visitors here. We'll have a chance for introductions. We'll get resettled here. You guys want to sit down? I didn't do my homework anyway, so. <laughs> so before we go to introductions, I just want to say uh, we challenge ourselves with with Tlingit. There's lots of stuff in the language to challenge ourselves with. But it's, it's not hard. It's just something we do. Eventually it'll just become like breathing to, to be able to speak in this language. And so in order to get to that place, we bring in our speakers to sit with us and to help us. Uh, this is part of a new program that the provost's office has funded to help improve what our classes can do. So, uh, you know, write them a letter, tell them that it's, it's effective, if it's working, we, you know, we're going to do this throughout the semester, bring different speakers in. And the idea is to break up some of the routines so that we can do drilling and, and work on the things that are going to help us understand the language, but then to get the cultural component from our speakers who are going to help us solidify that information and help us so that we can think and clink it because we don't want to just be speaking classroom clink it. We want to have that cultural context of a living language. And uh, it always makes me happy when we're, we're filling the room. The room is getting full. Pretty soon we're going to need bigger and bigger rooms for our language class. And that's exactly what we want. It's exactly what we're trying to do. So. Uh, we have plenty of guests with us this evening, so let's just start going around the room and just say who you are, uh, what your experience is so far with Clinkit, uh, and then we'll turn it over to our to our guest speaker. Our key guest speaker is Katachach. 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 She's Tsakwedi Flora Huntington. She's very, very fun to speak with and to interact with. And part of the idea behind this is to introduce you to the speakers in this community so that when you see them, you can sit down and, and visit with them and speak with them. Um, on a daily basis, there's just not enough people speaking our language, so we're going to change that. And part of that is just getting to know each other in this type of context. And also, King Risti is here, my grandson. He's Shungu Katie. And uh, they're going to help us tonight and, and really kind of lead the class. It's your guys' class. I'm just a moderator. I've got other things that we can do if we run out of time. But really, the key is to have you in as, as guest teachers and to figure out the best way to make this work. So we'll just go around the room to my left. My name is Steve Quinn, and I am here as a guest class. I'm a writer, First and Laskins Magazine, and to answer this question about um, my exposure to Clinkit, um, I'll be brief. My first exposure to Clinkit was when I moved to Alaska six years ago, and I watched a production of Macbeth get rehearsed and a set being built for a Clinkit production in Washington, D.C., and I was really taken by the work 
that these people did. And among them was Lance. He was their language coach, and it was his debut in the theater. Oh, yeah. That's right. I believe that that's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, My one and only performance. And, <laughs> <laughs> but that was my, my introduction to Clinton. Um, I have since had the pleasure of doing stories on Walter Soloff, Rosita Wall, um, Brian and Amos Wallace, um, and others. In the Southeast who are focusing on language, like um, Benjamin Young, being in this case Haida, David Boxley, and Sim uh, I believe what you folks are doing is very important, not just uh, you as a teacher, but everybody that's in this class. And that's one of the reasons why I'm writing a story. Uh, this is basically going to be on, on Lance's work. Um, and I've spoken enough. Thank you for your uh, hospitality. I'll be attending a couple of the classes. I'm Chelsea Pat. I'm from Oregon. I just moved up here in January. John Richards, Native English. Hi. Shigit and a son of Tar, you hurt the result. Nish Kalk and Pamela Johnson, you hurt the result. Nish Nazi, Kyuk the Adi Ayah. Dach And he, I am this year will be getting she'll, my youngest two are still being brought out. She'll be getting a second one. I don't know more than that. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. So we're um, waiting for home. Sorry, I don't have. Hi, Flora Huntington, Katash Gotch, Tagwegi, Hi, Hit. Originally, I'm Kik Kwan. I'm originally from Cake, but I've lived here since 1959. Um, Hashikwa is Kit Katsa. That's our tribal animal. From Hi, Hit, the Yellow Cedar House yeah, in Cake. Hello, well in the sea. Yes. I'm Lorraine Diasis. Um, just starting to learn and try to attend some classes. Um, been trying to get into um, some kind of way of um, learning the language with my kids. Classroom, please. Yes, let us. 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 Let us.
which could come yadi. Um, I grew up in Hana, but originally from Yakutat. My Tlingit name and English name is Sharifa. And the exposure of the language has been mostly singing and listening to my elders um, growing up in Hana. This is my second year in Tlingit, and I still have a long way to go. I feel like I'm just getting comfortable with it. And I, I think we should have a clink of anxiety class. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just as, as it was approaching me, like my heart's racing. I'm like, I'm going to be speaking our language. And I have to embrace that and use it as positive energy and not relate it to being scared to speak our language. But Ganesh Chish for offering the classes the last two years. I've learned a lot through the classes with the university. Uh, my name's Stephanie Tripp, and my Clinket names are Andachitin and Take. Uh, and I'm Deshi Tan, and I'm from Juneau, and my, I originated from Angoon, my family did. Um, and I'm, this is my second year taking Clinket as well, and I also have a long way to go. <laughs> Whatever you come to. <laughs> Um, my Clinket nickname is Ida. My English name is Heather. I moved up here in 2010. I, I couldn't tell you why, really. It just felt natural at the time. I started taking Clinket about two years ago. And I couldn't tell you why exactly in that season, but yeah, I definitely have a long way to go. <laughs> um, my name is Joan Mazurvi, Tlingit famous uh, class three Kirkwood class. I'm from Juno, and I'm so proud of Chibi Rico, and this is also my second year in Kirkwood. Okay. Okay. Hey, what? Hey, you are. Uh, my name is Josh. Chisha, <laughs> so she hit Noble children of the earth, and I mentioned the different clans, my father's clans of the Ranahedi people, and my grandfather's clan of the Sukahati, and also my in-laws and my uncle's in-laws of the Suknachadi clan, and then also my mother's grandparents' people of the Dukdain Khan people from the Huna area, mm -hmm. and then my most valuable father's shell, the Kiksadi clan. And then I mentioned that I come from the Thunderbird house, 
the house that was lowered by the sun, and also the house <coughs> that was made out of shish they hit with could be translated into the bark house, the tree bark house. Mm. And uh, those are the number of houses I come from. And then I mentioned my grandfather, Dan Katsi, uh, who's a tribal leader of the Kitu Shihit in, in Tlaquan. And I mentioned that I grew up in that, little, in that house when I was a child. And those totems are there to this very day. I slept under those particular totems. And that's a long time ago. I'm 70 years old now. So I'm glad to be here with you all tonight. And I'm glad to hear the efforts that you're making regarding the language. And I appreciate what's happening with uh, the University of Alaska Southeast and the work that you're doing there. And others, the work that's been going on. And I will just say this for this evening, because I may have to leave. What I said was, it's sounding over the earth. What's sounding over the earth? The language of our people, of the ancient people of this land is continuing to sound over the earth. And then I said, what else is what else is sounding but the knowledge and the wisdom of the thing of people is still being heard over this land. The mere fact that we have a class in the 21st century teaching an ancient language demonstrates, documents the intelligence of the Tlingit people and being able to get right in the middle of where things are happening. And not only things happen, but make things happen. And this is really positive. Um, thanks. Thank you very much for inviting me to come to your class. I am so gratified, so proud of all of you, yet humble, because what we're doing here is we're marching to the beat of the drum of our ancestors. Not by our ego, not by our pride, but the drum beat that our elders be it's sounding over the earth yet. Those are powerful words, not from me, but from people that I was able to sit with like the way you're sitting with us now, hearing words said like that. Those are really powerful words. Thank you. That's a long introduction. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a short version. I spent that uh, growing up with is Patrick Wheaton. Um, born and raised here in Juneau. And I'm studying Tlingit because seven and a half years in the Army and I could only say Tunish Chish and Dr. Sean. And I've learned up my Tlingit knowledge, so I'm just trying to learn some in my second year in this class. Okay. Tunish Chish. I'm Robin Dennis. And on the phone? Akisha Aya Akhbai, Dakshawadi, Na Khatsuti, Kituahain, 
Kaguantan, Hachawe, Hasaway, Ach Ishaya, Hasawasa, Ach Ishaya, Yupik Sati, Kasami, Tsu, Ach Ish to Ta Aya, Ya Norway, Dach Aya, Ka Ach Tisko Has Aya, Daklawedi. Ach shukwa ko atleti wu aya ach ta du ishawe gush dehin you do a sauvon chishuku sai aya kut shai du ishaya ka yuhan su ya tsa gwe iya yakheti achiko has yuhtati achawe yuhan su yishuka aya we kit ya kit kwani aya kitakat Ach tlil go hasaya, ye away ach tindatan. Ka gunis chish away, ach dachan. Kunachach tu yak e, nisekwa ach, nisekwa ach, gunchish. Ah, kunachaya gunis chish. Shoka hatik hatsati. Ha, naka hit the ya ya yet hit. Kud dakaya. Ach tlil gu tlein an kadach zin yu du a saugun. Ka du du kell aya dan a wak. Du du kik has awe. Kun ha gu wakan. Ka jak tin. Ka gu. Has awe tzu ach ku a tlati wu. Sa ti. Ach tu yak e a kan a kunach awe. Ach awe, tasha kaitach aya tlinke diwa katangi shtigil tu. Ako a haste kaitach awe haidan wat. Kunach awe ashakuk aya hayu katangi. Has ashakuk aya hayu katangi. Ganil chish tlain ha it itish yi. The kat yuhan. I wanted to do some kind of play where it's really just people getting together and having a meeting. And all they do is introduce themselves, and then they leave. Meeting is adjourned, and it just gets longer and longer as we go along. Uh, I'm really thankful for our visitors and for for your guys' efforts. You know, every now and then we need to sort of poke our heads out from under the water and realize that we're really we're making progress. We're not going to break our arms patting each other's on the back, but at the same time, Cyril George says a pat on the back never hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys are always saying you've got a long ways to go, and, and you do, but we've got a long time to, to get there. You know, as long as we're consistently working and we're making choices that allow us to just live with language. We, we study it, we practice it, but at some point we've got to just start living with language. And whether it's just gradually replacing words for things, or interacting with speakers as much as we can, interacting with recorded material as much as we can. It's really up to us to take ownership of language. And so, uh, you know, I'm very thankful to have uh, speakers who come in and, and take their time and, and really you know, take their energy and, and share that with us. And so, without further ado, I'll turn it over to our guest speakers to, to visit with us. We've got a speech by Ruth Demert to go over tonight. We've got some other things, but we've got lots of time to do whatever. It's really, it's up to you guys how much time you want to take for this first portion. So, I was telling before everybody came in, I was telling Mr. Katzik, I'm originally from Cake, mm -hmm. grew up in Cake, and they, um, back in the early 1900s, they nailed a silver spike in the wooden boardwalk with our traditions. The missionaries came and said, what's wrong? We were worshiping the totems, we were idolizing the blankets, and um, and so they nailed all of the traditions and they did away with it. So I grew up without it. Wow. So I'm learning, I was just telling him, I said, I, this is a learning process for me to, to uh, learn 
along with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And if um, you have questions, and if you see me on the street, please stop me and you know talk to me. I'm not very good at recognizing people, <laughs> so I, I you get old, you find all kinds of excuses. <laughs> but it just, um, I thank you for inviting me here, you know, for the privilege to come and to, you know, be of any help or what I could, what I've learned, what I know. I think Mr. Katsikis and this one here have more knowledge than I do. But like I say, I find it a privilege to be here. Okay. Uh, I think. Uh, the hundred year anniversary of that spike is either past yes, or it's yeah, coming it was in up. January. Was in yes. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. It was uh, my grandfather's um, I'm trying to think of his name now. It was his wife was chosen because they could speak English and uh, I might as just totally blank. But anyway, uh, he, my grandfather was uh, my mother's uncle, and we have the blanket that was passed down. It's over a hundred years old. The, the double killer elf. Oh wow! Yeah, with uh, and Bill, my nephew has that. Uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah, you guys use the split yeah, killer yeah, like it splits yeah. up the because, tail. Uh, right. It was the within the tribe. There was some uh, friction, and the, they was divided, and then they made peace. And if you look at the tail, you'll see the face of the seal in there. Mm -hmm. That's where the Tugwadi comes in. Right. There was, you know, they came back together and made peace. And our our emblem has got the split killer whale with. You'll see the tails with other split killer whales. It's empty, but ours has the seal in it, and that's the Tugwadi signature. Right. So. And you guys are one of the few clans that has a name. A lot of the clan names have to do with a specific place. Uh -huh. Tagua. You guys are Tagua. Uh -huh. yeah. It has to do with that seal. Yeah. And Tagua is, was the rock where the seals used to go and migrate, and they gave birth okay. to their babies there. And that's where the name came from. So that was my understanding, anyway. Yeah. And if we, when we left Angoon, you know, and split with uh, your tribe, then they moved to Saginaw Bay. Uh -huh. and so, yeah, that's my own history. Right, yeah, and that, that's also part of that yeah. split, yeah. right? Because yeah. a lot of times when a, when a clan splits, they use one of those split emblems. Mm -hmm. right? okay. Did you want to say anything? Um, said pretty much of what I was, was going to say, except for the fact that when you were sharing um, about how the silver spike was mm -hmm. driven into the ground regarding our culture, that you lost some of those mm -hmm. things that basically was there. In looking at this speech that is written here by by Ruth Demery. She says, Ye ska linget, Takwasa hatuasi tu, Yaha linget kusti ye. And it translated to have our tinket way of life. The thing we never do is we never discover, we never find the way. what I said, we never define that word way, the thinket way hmm. of God. Ha thinket sati ye, we respect each other. Ha thinket sati ye, we respect the environment that we're living in. That's part of the way. Our language is treated with respect. That's our way. Because the elder would say, They would say, Your words 
have life and death in it. You see how I'm explaining the word the way? That's why one time when I came into one of the classes, I said, we've got to watch our translation. Because nobody knows what the thinketh way of life is unless you really look at the ways of our people in the past, how they respected the water. They said hot quanning, mm -hmm. fish people. So they could respect it. Not so they could just do whatever they want with it, make all the money you can with it, and do whatever you can. They managed it to be developed different types of ways of harvesting the sand so that we could make sure that renewable resource is there. Ha, push, tea, ye. I'm saying it in English, not just in Thinket. It's English, but that's the Thinket way, to respect the water. We don't have a place called Jindayank or Pingy's Tip or Jimmy George or whatever. You hear they say Wrangell, Petersburg, Haynes. Huh? They say those names. Those are human being names. Think of people respected the land in such a way that they gave the name, the appropriate name that applied to that ecological, geological place. Khunaya. We say Khuna. The harbor from the North Mid. So I just say this right now. I can go on and on and on. And I could be wrong in some areas. And the other thing is, here's the other thing. <clears throat> the Thlingit way of life is to recognize when we make a mistake and make the correction. And somebody says, Dave, this is the way you do it. And I go and build, get a whole big case. That's not the thinking way. You don't get. It. I'm going to go to the law library and show you everything. This is the way it is. To admit that we're wrong when we make a mistake. And our stories. I wish I could say all our stories were just so perfect. I'm sorry to tell you. There was a lot of mistakes in those stories. But it also shows how when a person is humble enough to admit that they made a mistake and that they were wrong, how things change. And that's the purpose of the language. Otherwise, if we're just going to learn a language like the way you learn French, Spanish, and German, and the other, it's just them. But our people believed in the, in the word, Hitchin, Mayukatangi. Mayukatangi Hitchin. And so, thank you for letting me share that. And the other thing I want to share with you, Hitchuye Yati Yatushku. What you have in you is what you already have. They may have nailed a, thing, a spike on the ground, mm -hmm. but they didn't man nail it in you. Mm -hmm. and it wants to come out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It wants to come out. Isn't that fact? That's, yeah. that, that's a Hollywood type of story, in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Yeah, sure. that, that language is fighting within her spirit to come out. Then get close to you. Oh, can't keep it down. I'm sorry. It's not. That's not breaking my arm on my back <laughs> or on anybody's back. This is what I'm sharing. I can share in confidence. 
because I sat with men and women who talked like the way I'm talking. I'm not the one talking the way I'm talking. It's the people that I sat with, your relatives. My brother sitting across you, his relatives, and other relatives. And not everybody nailed the the coffin on our language, and I'm glad that my parents and my grandparents did it. And it was really important. But those are healing things, right? They're not like to put down somebody. That's really good to bring out what hurts. Just wash so it's in. Just wash it. It's okay. It's okay to bring things up. This is thinking, because you see, just building on that word, to bring out the wrong in a way that may have been done. Look at it. Acknowledge it. Accept it. Acceptance doesn't mean you agree with what somebody said or did. You're just letting that person be. And then forgiveness is not a lot saying, saying to that person, oh great, that's okay. <clears throat> forgiveness is just saying to yourself, I'm not going to let that beat me up anymore. I'm not going to live there. That's the thing that way. Just food for thought. I, uh, I'm getting old. I come into a place, you start talking to just on word. My spirit just jumps onto the thing, and then you have to be able to take a baseball bat and hit me over there to jump me up or something. So, anyway. Well, when I translate this first line, he's tossing it, David can't see. (laughs) But there's a really good point there that the act of translation never stops. Like, we've got so much incredible material out there. But don't just accept it and say, okay, that's what that is, that's what that is. But as you study this language more, Come back exactly. into those. Yeah. And even a long time ago, there's a reason why they would just tell the stories over and over and over. Because they would always find things to come yeah. back to, whether it's within the language, within the moments, within the storyteller, or within those connections that were made. And so we have, we have all this stuff out there. And it's, it's not like we're arguing with each other, but we're finding these fine points. And that helps us to understand the language. Because sometimes if you just say, oh, well, this is that, there's four or five different ways to interpret what that thing is. Mm-hmm. You know, kuste is life, right? And so that even that is, you can't define that. So, then it's chi, shen. And that's really powerful, man. That, that part, what he just got, got through sharing, because there's lots like this, right? And I'm not, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not putting anybody down with respect to what we're doing. I'm just giving an example on how you can open up a word and really look at the word. And that's how you fall in love with the language. That's how you develop a relationship with the language. Right. And do the same thing with the land. And if you're doing this type of work and somebody says, oh, well, this actually means that, just enjoy that discussion you know and we're talking about how the language lives so it's very good we have a one more speaker in the room that i'd kind of like to hear from his perspectives on what we're talking about or your experience with the language coach shy is always always coming up with these words that his dad knew that that a lot of people don't talk about anymore like meteorite and mm-hmm. eclipse and all these really fantastic things that uh, he sends me all these little gems and and his dad i've got some notes on a dictionary that i was working on years ago when i was trying to you know i'm always we're always learning we're always learning and i was really just really grappling with language and wrestling around with it and get beat up and uh someone took it to his dad and it was in his 
Final days. He's working on that dictionary. So I've got corrections that are some of the last things that his dad did. And, and it gives me a lot of inspiration to say, that's what I want to be doing, is, you know, working on the language for as long as I can. So did you want to say anything to us? Well, I'll pass that around and see if anybody knows what those are. Just look at it and pass it around. I'm going to have to tap the screen and get down to that. Notice how small those are. Maybe a lamp saw this on Facebook. Mm. Uh, those of you on the phone, uh, a phone is being passed around with a, a picture on it, and we'll, we'll talk about it in just one second. Those are child size handcuffs. Those were used in Canada to take the kids away from their parents. So they wouldn't learn the language, so they wouldn't know their culture, so they could be white. Or Western. No. Like one preacher said on TV, the problem with a lot of the missionaries was they confused the word evangelize with anglicize. Hmm. <laughs> I remember uh, living, and I was living in Kenai for a while, and there were three speakers there left of the dialect from that area. They were both in their late 70s and early 80s. There was a brother and his sister and their cousin. And the sister died first, and then a short time later, the brother died. And they interviewed the last speaker, and he said, they asked him what he, if he had anything to say about his cousin's passing, and he said, now I have no one left to answer me. Hmm. That was the last of them. Wow. And he's gone too. And I think about that. dot. <clears throat> That's why I always say what I feel about the language is it's like a man who's on his deathbed and he starts breathing with his jaw. That's the way the Klinka language sounds and looks to me, I have to say. Mm. And it last gasps. So how appropriate this is and good that lamp is teaching. It's good to see all of you here. This is why I come here. To hear, to listen, to take part, just even just to sit and watch. Mm. But with this group and the other group that I've seen in your classes and knowing that other than Sitka and Cake and Yakutat are teaching Klingit, maybe we'll never hear those words. Mm. Now I have no one left to answer me. Chawai. Tanachusha. There's a couple of stories that come to mind when we talk about healing and and it's, it's another clinky thing to do to just talk right at something, even if it's very difficult, because we know how to talk in a way that's, that's sensitive, that will create healing instead of more harm. Some people, they get really uncomfortable. They'll say, why do you want to talk about that? It's in the past. There's nothing we can do. But this is exactly what we can do. 
all those efforts to try and, and just take this from us. And this is the only thing that we can really hold on to. I don't know if we can keep the land. I don't know if we can keep the salmon. I don't know if we can, you know, these are things that we can fight for. But we can keep our language. There's nobody out there who's stopping us from, from taking it back. It's very hard. The language itself is very fun. And it's incredibly complicated, but that just shows you how smart we are. This is what we come from. The hard part, I think, is getting over those things that stop you from speaking. Just on our daily, you know, just sitting in the shower, mm -hmm. driving in the car, Beautiful. talking to your dog. Talking, you know, I talk to my daughter all the time, and you know, she talks back and she listens a lot. She talks in English a lot, but you just, you just keep going, keep going. You find those outlets, you find those places, because every time we speak, it's it's a rebellion against those things that people try to do to us, and it's cementing a future where our language can live. So you know, as you sit there and you think, well. I don't want to just say the same word over and over and over. But, but do those things. Do those things that are going to put the language in you. And then also find ways to interact with the language. Uh, there's videos online. There's speakers that are here. You know, there's speakers who are honestly just very lonely. I went to Whitehorse and I videotaped these two elders there and it was so cute, but also Heartbreaking at the same time they're bumping their wheelchairs into each other because they're so excited to, to just talk with him And you know, we, we have that we have people out there who are also lonesome for it So you guys are hungry for it. They're lonesome for it. It's a perfect match right? It's like uh, e-harmony right? <laughs> It's T-harmony I'd like to uh, say some more with respect to uh, where my spirit is, and I don't necessarily speak in the Tinket language, um, but Tinket language is very powerful and very good to use. The thing that I want to share with everyone, in the years that I've looked at the kind of things and the stories that I've heard from a whole host of different people, for thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands our people have come into circumstances and situations that really seemed hopeless. <clears throat> hopeless. Communities wiped out by large landslides. Songs composed by those remaining using them to this very day when there's a party going on. The doomsday sayers were saying, it's over, it's over, it's over. <clears throat> but those thinget kustigia kept on keeping on to the point that it wasn't for about, what, 10 years ago now, they found the man in the ice. They found out that he was Tinket. And they did a study on DNA, whatever kind of study they did on him. They found out he was Tinket, and that his remains were over 10,000 years. I'm here to remind you that's how long our people have been here. We've come up against things like people saying, don't speak your language anymore. We've come up against people trying to evangelize us and turn ourselves against ourselves. Don't get me wrong, I'm not putting religion down, okay? I'm not putting down what happened to other people. We've come through the Ice Age. The Ice Age. We've come through the great flood that came upon this earth. We're sitting here. There are very few people 
who can say the kind of things I'm saying right now. And if I were to die tonight in the way things seem to go, that could happen. I would want to leave everybody with this thought. There's not a thing we can't do. Our elders and our ancient ones have come through it all already. You would not be sitting here saying your name to the best of your ability if those people said was those missionaries was those people and that people that took away our name we're doing what we're doing because we're answering the call and it doesn't take a whole thousands upon thousands of people to make things change in a positive way for all of us. If some of those ancient ones were here, they could go and they would list almost everything, like in the Torah, all the things the people came through. Everything, they would write it all down all the things that we came through and they're going to come and say, what about the time when all the people were starving? <laughs> they would come and say, let me show you how this story applies to us today. Raven is flying over and he sees up you people sitting all along the shore and he's wondering, what's wrong? What's the matter? People look disturbed, they look hurt, they look sorrowful, they look like they're in grief, they look like they're in mourning. And Ganuk is going to say, Ya Hasnachla, they're starving. Then he would, Raven would say, Don't they know that they're sitting by a lot of food? I love Raven. <laughs> they're sitting by a lot of food. And they're starving. Why am I bringing that story up? Because it just if it was good 10,000 years ago, it's good today. Yeah, well. If we're starving for our heritage of who we are, there is a lot of information all over the place. The land is telling the story of our people. It's shouting it from the hillside. Ha kushti ye ah. We have it in us. And I want you all to know really that I love all of you. And I wouldn't get out on a limb like I just did here just to sound like I'm sounding good. But because I say, how would the, how would our elders handle it a long time ago? How would they deal with what we're dealing with? Get the hon. Yaka go. I love that. Get up and walk. <laughs> Don't sit. That's the power of our language. Get up and walk. This is not necessarily just the white man way, huh? Shkasnik. 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 A two gayety. History. Our stories written right here. History, stories, different material, that's all it is. Different material. I said, ah, that's a white man's job. I don't know. Hmm. <coughs> Not anymore. 
Not anymore. Think of people who use resource materials as good as anybody else. And you know what? We can improve on this. <laughs> That's really egotistical. But we can improve. And I'm not referring to what's written on it. I'm talking about the, 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 that material. So anyway, thank you again very much. I'm sorry that I'm emotional. Probably basically just because of the kind of things that have happened to us in the last month. And I understand what my my brother is saying. Sometimes you look at it and feel like it's dying. Mm. It's dying. But I have to say no. It's not going to die. That isn't why. That isn't why the way your dad spoke, the way he spoke, and my dad spoke, the way he spoke, and your relatives spoke the way they spoke. They didn't speak in vain because our language is strong. And there's my dad sitting over there looking at me, probably telling me, shut up, husband. <laughs> <laughs> but see how it is? My, my, that's my dad sitting right there. Yeah, Ganach Tevi. Or Ganach Adi. Ganach Tevi. Ganach Tevi, yeah. From Pakwan. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, student response? Yes. I'd like to respond oh. to Mr. Katsik first. Okay. It says, no, you know, if you listen to what Mr. Katsik is learning, you will be able to take some little part of his speech and what he has said and refer to it and someone else is speaking, you will learn through all of this. And I appreciate that. Guntish. Yeah. No pressure. You can't have cock up good so I don't talk. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you guys so I don't keep on talking. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Do that. But I just want you guys to know I love you. Hong Kong. What good would be a language? What good would it be? What good would it be if we didn't love each other? Our language is a love language. It's pre- why would we say mm-hmm. that at the end of that word is a very intimate way of saying precious, special, unique, most wonderful. That's the way my mind goes. People say, oh, you're just paraphrasing it. No, I'm really ticketizing it, <laughs> like my mom would say. So thank you very much. I did say I was going. Everybody say goodness, cheese, shik. Goodness, you huh? All right. Let's take a five-minute break. Five-minute break. Then we'll come in and we'll look at the. You guys on the phone? You doing okay? Uh-huh. Anybody want to start with anything? I've asked for a story. I'll let that request just float out there. If you want to fulfill it, that's fine. If not, that's fine. I'm very shy. Okay. <laughs> okay, anything on anyone's mind before we move along? I'll tell a story on sugar books here. Please uh, do. Sugar weights. Uh, sugar weights. I used to see her in the beef shop downtown. She had a little shop upstairs in that building. And every once in a while she'd be open, and every once in a while she'd be there. And I thought, what kind of Indian operation is this? How does she keep staying in business but go in there whenever she feels like it? That's Later, I found out she owned the building. <laughs> <laughs> when I felt like it. <laughs> he used to write nasty notes and leave it on my door. I would feel so bad. Oh. And so then they start posting them. 
right on, on my counter space. And I said, look at what people are saying about me. Mm. And people would look at it and they'd walk back out. And I thought, hey, if they want to post something on the, my door, I'm going to leave it there for everybody to see. Nice. <laughs> I like his t-shirt says, I'm not always late. Sometimes I just don't show up. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I should have had. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here's what we're going to do got this uh, speech. I'll give you a little bit of context for it. And we're going to go around the room and you're each going to read one of the sentences. And then we'll just spend some time if there's anything you want to talk about with the sentence, grammatically things that you're noticing, questions you might have about how it's working, um, thoughts about different ways we might translate the line in some cases, or, you know, just culturally some things that are being talked about. Uh, for those of you who are the students, I remind you to speak with your river voice if you can. So we have folks on the phone, and and sometimes if we have visiting speakers, they they want to be able to hear you. So do I. The context is Hakwas uh, Ishmael Hope went over to Cake to do some storytelling over there and do some work with their school. While he was there, he was interacting with Hanuk quite a bit, which is Ruth Demer. And at one point, he asked her to just record a message, an inspir inspirational message to students of the Clinket language. And so for a while, I've been wanting to, to bring it in here. Uh, and it's something for us to study as far as language-wise, culture-wise, and also just to sort of know that there, there's all kinds of people out there who really support what we're doing. All right. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> you have no idea what kind of abilities I have. <laughs> Just got back from, I traveled through the Woodburn Hole. And uh, thanks for pointing that out. Because, uh, That's six corrections, including the ones on the application today. Close to Facebook, so you did like five corrections on that. Okay. I didn't see we're on it today. Okay, so first, <laughs> 2012. Okay. The next handout will be from the year 2025. We'll still be around speaking clean. All right. This car. This car can get. Wasa hat was a good. Jaha can get Kusinye. Young people, how very happy we are spiritually to have our clean way of life. Anything you guys want to talk about with that? To Wasi, do we mean that my spirit is happy or someone's spirit is happy? Yeah, so to Wusagu is happy, <laughs> to Wasagu is wanting. They're very similar. So tu wu is the space inside, which generally means like your spirit or your emotions. Tu wa is sort of like the face inside. Very similar concepts. But, you know, tu wu, and that's usually how you talk about emotions in Tlingit. You know, ach tu wu yak e, ach tu wu siku. And there are others that sort of we can analyze what that's doing as far as talking about emotions. Uh, but that's the range of them. We see it uh, up on that poster that one of our fellow classmates made last year. Is that when you talk about emotions, you're usually talking about inside. This emotion is inside. And it's really kind of interesting. Uh, so it'd be it'd be interesting to hear the recording also and see if it's tu wusagu or tu wasagu. Sometimes those can be you can wander back and forth between them. Anything else? Mm. Uh, David Katzik had said ha kustiya um, kustiya, and then I just noticed at the bottom of the difference of kustiya. Um, to kusti yi. Kusti yi 
would be the possessed form of qusti. Qusti just means it means life. Mm. You say ha qusti or lingit qusti. And then it's one of those things where there's a lot of directions to go with that, right? Ha qusti would literally mean our life. But usually you're saying our culture, our way of being. And klingit qusti the way of being clinket or clinket life. And so it, it, you know, like he was saying, it opens this door to translation. And it's one of those things like any act of translation is going to be sort of minimalizing what's there, but it gives us lots of stuff to talk about too. That way, as you encounter language, if people say things or if somebody calls you up and says, I want you to translate this for me and start speaking in clinket, then it's going to roll through your brain which ways you're going to say it. And so it's an interesting thing. So, Literally, it means clink it life. And then he was saying it like, yeah, like like the A Kusti. instead of an I. Oh, kusti. Uh, uh, yeah. uh is a focus, what we call a focus particle. And that means you're just saying, really. And, and sort of you're putting emphasis on something. Like you could say, goodness, cheesh, uh. Right? And you're just saying, and it's just... It's just calling attention to what you just said. Okay. And another one that does something similar is ha. But ha is sort of like a, a way to call attention to something, but usually kind of soften it as well. Because it's sort of like saying, you see. That's how a lot of people translate that. Like they might say, um, <coughs> It's very strong, you see. And so those are a couple different things that could happen. And so, and that's what happens when someone gets named, right? Someone's name, ah, and everybody repeats it. But a common mistake for people who don't speak is they'll say, my name is du ani kaudanuk ah, right? And you just go around saying that, which, which happens, you know. But as we learn the language, we, we see that that's a focus particle. And it pops up in aya and awe and other things. It's the ah. It's like sort of like this right here. Other thoughts? All right. Who wants to read the next one? Laura, do you read? <coughs> I can't read, sorry. It's okay. Go to Shai. Where are you? Uh, second box down. Shai, do you? Figure last one again. That's one I couldn't figure out. That's one I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. find that anywhere. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I I would say yeah one. Yeah no. Uh, he jawed it. Yeah yeah. You know that doesn't make any sense now. Cause ye, that's obviously you all. Yeah one. But yeah, then what? I didn't see a verb that was oh. I, I didn't see a I verb. Didn't understand that. That so that might be one to <laughs> examine. Does it mean breath or to give it breath? I don't know. I didn't find it anywhere. And so if you wanted to say don't live another way, but hit a day would usually mean you would expect a yet after the verb, perhaps, to say, there's no way it could be like something, right? I think we hear that in the translation of the Lord's Prayer. Oh, yeah? That same word. This one? Yeah. What did they say in the Lord's Prayer? They told you. Huh. Interesting. All right, I'll dig or I'll try and find an answer for that. Because when I was working on this, yeah, I saw, and I was like, I don't know what that is. Because I didn't hear her say it. Um, you know, Ishmael Hope recorded it, and he did fantastic work with it. Um, but I haven't heard, so I wasn't sure what that part was. Okay. Next. Our slinket way of being gives us strength. 
to. Um, last scene is string, and that's written differently from what I'm used to seeing it. Right. So this is a verb form, hanaltsin, would mean <clears throat> it's strengthening, mm. right? It's sort of a different form, hanaltsin. And so what you see popping up is the conjugation prefix at the front, which changes the form of the verb. So it usually, a lot of times in this case, I think it's putting it into... Um, what we call a, a progressive imperfect. It's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think? So scene is the verb? Scene, yeah, like klitzin, right? So klitzin, klitzin means to be strong. Klitzin means strength. So yeah. similar, siti, klingit ha siti. We are clinket. Clinket ha sati. Our identity, our clinket identity, or our being clinket. So when it goes from siti to sati, it's changing, right? So what happens there is the classifier changes and that makes it into a now. Kitsin, satsin. Little sort of thing to keep an eye out. Anything else? Okay. Ha you adungi tsu. Our language too. Straightforward. Ha you tsu. Can you get? Yes, it is. It's hard to see. Gukwati. It's like we're going to rise up. You got a thought on that one? Yeah, if you're mm -hmm. trying to put sentences together using these, mm -hmm. don't say look at the look at it, look at it line for line, and don't think that came too good is it's like because that top ah. sentence if you switched. Right. That's a good point, because uh, one thing that I think the Downhowers usually employed was that they would take the sentence and then they would write it to make it sound really good in English. But some of the newest translations from James Crippen and others, you try to match what's on the line. So, came to good, we're, we're going, we're walking up. Came to good ayakakwati. So rising up, it's like it's going to be, is really what's going on there. Good point. It's cheesh. Anything else? <coughs> so the other thing is if something pops up before the verb that starts with an N and it, and it ends with a vowel, they just run together. And this is really important when you start hearing clinket and sort of understanding what's going on or writing it down. Understanding is always more important than writing it down. But if, if you wanted to sort of transcribe something, when you hear came to good, you're going to say that the K-E-I is a different part than the N-T region. So K means to sort of go upwards. So you want those to sound like they're one word. Yes, and so when you're reading them as well, they sound like one word. Like you could say, ya nakut, he's, he or she is walking. But ya is a different word than nakut. Okay. Always try to be respectful. So, speaking of things that run into each other, when you see ch and top, they tend to sort of run right into each other. Ch top. That's usually how they come out for speakers. Ch is a word that sort of tends to run into what's after it. 
Like if you say every, you say chashtakat, and it sounds like one word smashed together. Chak, kagi aku. And then kahwasa is another one that you see a lot in oratory. It literally means like how, very, whatever. And it's a way to really just sort of ramp up what's coming next. Kahwasa ya'at im. And that is saying ya'at uh, is respect and then im. Any guesses on im? No. It's one that has a few different forms. It's like with or together? With, yeah. Oh. With. I thought it was like next to. <laughs> Not right next to. Close. So it would be chan. <laughs> okay. So in is also can be teen <clears throat> or tin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang it, that is. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> this is good, but that's just a good, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Right. But it, it's sort of a contextual translation. Okay, really, it just means good or fine. So remember, even if you're not sure how to read it, try not to bend it up at the end. <laughs> to say, just mash your way through it and say gua afterwards or say ye kushe or doi. But there's a number of things you could say afterwards to say I'm not too sure. Try not to bend it up at the end because we see the tone is flat on this one. Okay? Respect for each other may be very Thoughts on that one? The um, gosh that seem, is that making strength? Because it's going to make you strong? Gosh that seem. Um, hmm. I don't know. Fashitzin as opposed to Kitzin. I'm trying to think. Wushia would denate Kahwasa Kashitzin. To me, I would not use that in in this sentence, <laughs> and I'm trying to think of to define the difference between chatin and kasatin. Right, because yeah. it, it seems like you would encounter wushia awud ne kahwasa kachtulatin or something like that, where it goes into a future form. Almost needs another part of it, or something else to go with it. Huh. Yeah, because the you're getting a uh, what appears to be like a future form. I'll have to take a look at that one. It's like you're trying to gain strength. Right. That's how I would interpret it. Like it's happening or it's yeah. beginning to happen. Huh. <coughs> yeah, I don't see any. Huh. I'll have to look at that. I don't see any forms with the underlying GA in it. So that might be. Like you could say. Kahwasa. Khashitzin, you could say that. Like, khashitzin means it's ch cherished. That wouldn't really yeah, make sense it, either, right? It's something you cherish. Okay. So, yeah, I'll examine that one as well. Sheesh. How do you find cherished in that? Khashitzin. Khashitzin. So, the kha in front of it turns it into. Something is precious. 
right? It's usually how it's used. Like you could say, our language is, is, has high value. But if you, it can be conjugated as well. We see in uh, this speech by George Davis, we cherish our grandchildren. <laughs> <clears throat> so yidat is now and yisiku is you all know you all know this now all right uh, on the phone I just sent this I sent it out over email did you guys get it uh, okay. Are you attending to school? Person speaking has kept up from falling too hard. Okay. That's on this one? That individual L. Oh, the L? Mm hmm. On its own, it really means uh, it's a contraction of kech or hech or shech. So there's a lot of ways to say not. Mm. Most commonly, it pops up to sort of mean without. Um, but that's how I would read it. So that it won't happen. Yikshech. <laughs> Ha yu a person's speaking. So somebody's speech or language. Okay. And the next one on the phone. Now. Can you hear her? No, I didn't hear anything except for one maybe word of that. I am across the room. Ya anayin yidat. Yidat is now anayin. Oh, sorry, I should translate it first. It's getting that way. Yidat meaning now or getting to be. Anayin is that way. And ya is. Ya anayin would be the the way to say that it's an imperfective or like a probably a progress. I mean, it's beginning. It's, it's beginning to be that way. Is that how you would translate that? Or it's happening now. Ya anayin. How very much we don't want to have our lives ever get that way. It's interesting because it's saying how very much we want that our lives will not be that way. And it's interesting when speakers will, which one speakers will make negative. Because you could say, Kesh ha tu wa ushku to talk away. You know, we don't want to always be that way. But it's saying, we want for it to never be that way. That's how I would read that sentence. Because we want it to never be that way. So the same speaker used the and the he for not. Is it? Was there like a reason for using the L individual or the H? I think it. I think it's just speaker preference. So she just. But there, there could be something both. more to it. Yeah. So too. Now I see Harold smirking on Colin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of the, this is.
listening to speakers who can think, project, calculate, and do everything in Klinka with no English, their sentence structures and thought is completely different. Right. The way we would say things in Klinka is not the way we would say it in English, and you can't take English and translate it into Klinka. Right. And teach it at Klinka. It's like going into a McDonald's and seeing a sign in Spanish and then looking below it in English and say, that's not what it says in Spanish. Right. <laughs> But that's the way they say it in Spanish. Because especially the context, when you ask a speaker, give the students a message, now you're seeing this message be processed. And, and so it's interesting to look at this act, like line by line, how it's coming from her mind, and then trying to look at what the grammar is doing, which is really interesting. Because we can learn all these different things about grammar, but then when you capture a speaker, you're like, Oh, that's what, you know, and then that gives you a lot to analyze because there would be multiple ways to say these types of things. Mm -hmm. But this was, you know, this was her message and it was interesting to just look at how she delivers it. I've seen the negatives in here twice. I was thinking about that when I was arriving in Sitka on my ferry one time and I asked my dad, how do you say we're almost there? And I was trying to think of how that would be in uh -huh. English. Uh -huh. And he said, Hesya no tu Oh. We haven't arrived yet. Right. But that isn't what I asked, but that's the way it's said in Klingit. Yeah. We're see, almost there, but that's not the way it's said in Klingit. Because <laughs> yan could mean to the shore, but yan could also mean to completion. So you say, we haven't finished our journey yet, or we haven't reached the shore yet. Yeah, and it's, I've done that with Nora, too. Like, how do you say this? And then when, I, when she says it, and then I think about it or examine it more, it's different than I ever would have predicted which is why you've got to always work with speakers so you're not... Because sometimes the concepts are just totally different in Klinka. Uh, we're on the top of page two. Yes, in good class, the two you can not talk at night, you. Our Klinka ways of being carry it with you. Slack, slack. Oh, wait. Any, I'm sorry. Any thoughts on that one? Any you guys notice what I'm talking about? Kwan is a neat little particle. It means basically like be sure to. So it's a, in a lot of ways, it's a way to sort of soften a command sometimes. Like, you know, be sure that this happens. Mm -hmm. uh, be sure to carry it with you. Okay. She's. <laughs> I had the courage a minute ago. Nope. <laughs> his, his energy got me in the moment of hearing his wonderful thing get over there. Slach wasa ha tu tu yak e cha yatsu yach yadu yuhan. How truly good we feel that we are still here. Thoughts? Why do you say, uh, why do you say to woo your prey but to what to do? So to woo sagu would mean happy. To woo ya a would mean to feel good. They're pretty close, but there's a slight difference. You know, and a lot of times when you say ha to woo ya ke, <coughs> like the, the inverse would be tesh tesh to woo ushke. I don't feel good, right? And this one is used a lot to say, we felt good because of what you did, or we felt good because of something, right? So happiness is usually, that's, that's the way I would see it. And, and, you know, and, it, and they're almost interchangeable, but they're slightly different. But it, it's to feel happy or to feel good. The translation still here. Mm -hmm. They're saying we're still standing. That's what the it. We're still here. Like Yadu Uhan, here we are. Chagesu, still. Chagesu Yadu Uhan, we are still here. Right, which just changes the definition. So, like we said, we're here, but in some cases, we said we're still here. You can almost hear uh, I can almost hear an old speaker talking like that in English when he was very 
still hear us. Oh, yeah. really? Mm-hmm. Right. Instead of we're still here, they still hear us. Right, because, yeah, if we look at this, let's say this clinket, our identity, or our being. Um, oops, I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> Let me try that again. It's like, wait, that's not what it is. So, yeah, so if we looked at it, we've got very, how, say, our, inside, good, just, still, here, us. Right? So see how it sort of is structured grammatically. Of course, when we put it together, it's, it's, it flows better than that in, in clinket. But just to think of the grammatical differences between the two languages. Uh, whatever you are thinking, don't behave like our culture is gone. Hmm. Thoughts? Tadasa uh, would mean whatever. <laughs> and that doesn't always mean like whatever. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Tadasa uh, would literally just mean like whatever thing, right? Tadasa <laughs> it Whatever your spirit, whatever you're doing, however you feel, whatever's inside you. Heshayach ye I wonder how that second part is functioning. Not like it. Ye da ye me ye. I, it probably is. <laughs> What's wrong here? <laughs> I'll look at that. We have five minutes left. Oh. Thoughts. <laughs> can you guys can you guys read it together so we don't leave it lingering? Oh. Fast speakers here. Okay, back and forth. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll just go through. Um, I guess the clinket in the English. We are still here. We probably will be talking through things on the phone through it. It's okay that you call me too. Chayesu Ohan, Chayesu Yato Ohan. We are still, we are still here. Kahwasa Gunnish Chish, Yis Kauch, Yikach, Yikach Yak E Ayati. How very thankful we are, young people, when you stay here. Kato Ak Kayuk Atangik has. Wow. <laughs> we try to give words that will keep people from falling too hard. It is a cherished thing, our language, our way of life, our way of life, live through it.
Respect, respect for each other, live through it. This is why I'm talking to you. School muti at gea kah at nighty. Going to school, carry it with you. Kah wasa ashitzin, how much it gives us strength. Ya atwos kah, this knowledge. Yis an aya, a new world. This is a new world. Chatlakya na kwatla ane, our world is always spinning. It's always spinning. Your children will live like this. Your grandchildren. This is how you will carry it on, too. Let it be with love of people. Let it always be with love of people. Awasa. How that is. Wushya wudene. Yes, respect each other. Ah, yes. Tikat yuhan nawe khach yich sechan. Every one of you. I love all of you. That is what my grandfather told me. Het kusachan kut kukwati singit sati. The clinket way of being will not be without love of people. Chatlak wuch by sachan. Always love each other. Ayachawe, ayachawe. That's it. Do you want to give us any closing words? I just appreciate each of you. you no, know, I just really thank you for inviting me. I'm sorry I didn't contribute as much as supposed to, but I, yeah, yeah. you know, once again I ask, you know, if you see me, if you want to ask a question, I shall be more than happy to help you. Yeah, yes. you help a lot. The idea is we're just going to continue to get used to working together. All right. Which I asked to cut your hand, finish cheese, finish cheese, to cut your hand, and do such a cupcake.